Hello, welcome to another virtual youth group. It's good for you to see us, as the phrase now goes. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, so yeah, here we are again on week, uh, I don't know, what is this, like four or five? This is five, I think. Fifteen, something. Uh, it's been a while, uh, but we're, we're still at it, and it's important still to dive into the Word and, uh, and do that. So we're going to continue uh, looking at God's Word today. Caleb's going to uh, meditate a bit on uh, Psalms uh, for us today, um, and so we look forward to that in a bit. Uh, usually at this time, we do uh, God sightings. Uh, however, there aren't really any God sightings. No one submitted anything this week. So uh, if you have any God sightings, feel free to text Caleb or myself. Um, if you want to even do like a little video uh, of, uh, of what your God sighting is, that's awesome too. We'd, we'd love to include that here. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, you know, we can definitely celebrate, though, the, the fact that God is still good. Um, uh, God is still present. God is still doing stuff. Uh, even with this shutdown, you know, uh, businesses are shut down, schools are shut down, but God's not shut down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sounded kind of corny, yeah. but it's true. Like, it's true. <laughs> you know, God, God is still doing awesome stuff, and so we praise him for that. Uh, and then uh, next, normally we do, is a question box, but nobody had any questions this Come week. Come on, Toby. <laughs> You're getting just, called out now, just, apparently. It's really the whole Bulma clan, isn't it, between Johnny and Toby usually? Yeah, we could use a few questions. Anyways, if you got questions, uh, you can uh, shoot those our way. Uh, we'll, uh, you can get to it online. Uh, you can text us if you want. Uh, I'll throw a link in the bottom of this video for a question box as well. Uh, but if you got questions, we'd love to, to talk about those as well. Um, so with that then, I think we're going to just hand it over to Caleb and dive into Psalm. Yeah, uh, so we are going to be reading from Psalms 42 and 43. So if you got your Bibles, like go pause this video. Uh, go get them and then come back. So pause. Okay, welcome back. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yes, turn with me to Psalm 42, and then we're going to be reading uh, 42 and 43, actually. Um, so keep your Bibles open, because uh, I'm just going to kind of go, I'm going to read a section, uh, and then I'm going to kind of break it down, and then I'm going to read a little bit more, and I'm going to break it down again. So just keep your Bibles open. We're going to go for a ride together. It's going to be great. Because God's good. But, yeah, keep your Bibles open. Going for a ride together. We're going for a ride together. Let's go. (laughs) All right, Psalm 42, verse 1. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. Okay, so that was verses 1 through 5. Uh, and so what we see here is like the psalmist is kind of, he's, he's lamenting. That's a biblical term for kind of like, uh, weeping, uh, just being kind of sad. Uh, I have used the word downtrodden as well. Like it's just kind of like he's disappointed. He's he's just kind of in a general state of sadness. Um, but what is causing his sadness actually? It's kind of relatable for us. Uh, is in verse four uh, he says, "How I used to go to the house of God." Well, when was the last time we were all able to gather together in the house of God? It's pretty relatable to us, I think. We're sitting in an empty sanctuary that hasn't had people in it now for like a month. Yeah. Uh, And so what we see here is like this not being able to go to the house of God is taking a like physical toll on the psalmist. Uh, I don't even know if we think about like church that way sometimes, but like not being in church is really taking a physical toll uh, on me at least. And uh, I would imagine maybe on several of you. Um, But even during this time, he recognizes his need for the Lord. Uh, In verse 5, where he just asks, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Uh, Put your hope in God. So even in this time, he says to his own soul, he's speaking to himself, Put your hope in God. Uh, And so this kind of reminded me of a quote, actually, uh, from Augustine, which Augustine is a church father. He's super old. yeah, I don't really know how else to put it. but He's uh, a pretty big-time theologian. He did a lot of studying of the Bible and uh, teaching on the Bible. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> old. He's pretty. Hey, old people got wisdom, so I'm just out here getting Augustine. Uh, so he says this. Uh, you have made us for yourself, Lord, and our soul is restless until it rests in you. Uh, so what this really kind of means from Augustine is like, we were made for God. We were made to be in the house of the Lord. And when we're not in the house of the Lord, we're restless. Uh, and I mean, yeah, we're not going to rest until we rest in God. Uh, so that's what it means to put our hope in the Lord, is to rest in the Lord. Uh, because he's the only like way we're going to find satisfaction in life. Uh, we see this in John 4. Some of you might remember the story of the Samaritan woman, uh, where Jesus is speaking about living water uh, that will... Oh, it never leave you thirsty, uh, and it'll never leave you wanting more. So, yeah, the Lord uh, is our ultimate satisfaction. Uh, and we were made for God, uh, and we will, like, never find true satisfaction until we find joy in spending time with Him. Um, so that's verses 1 through 5. Brian, do you got anything to add to that? That was, that was good, yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to read verses 6 through 8 now of Psalm 42. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you. From the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. So, what we see here uh, is further from like verse 5 here. Um, the psalmist is running to the Lord yet, even in the midst of suffering. Uh, and so, like, what you see here, uh, where is it? In verse, uh, why am I, mi- oh, verse 6, there it is. Uh, why they make pens and highlighters. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, Therefore, I will remember you, uh, in verse 6. Uh, whenever we're going through, like, times of suffering, like we all are right now, we need to remember, like, the sovereignty and the mercies of God. Uh, that have already happened in our lives. Uh, So for me, like, a common one is, like, just remembering how God paid for my schooling. Uh, I had a tremendous amount of money to come up with uh, in a short amount of time, and God provided for me. Uh, Otherwise, I wouldn't be sitting here right now if God had not provided for me. So in times like these, just remember the times when God has just showed up in your life in such a way that, like, if you weren't, if God didn't show up, you wouldn't be where you're at now. Uh, so remember those times in the midst of suffering. I think it's good, too. Sorry to interrupt you. You know, you, you mentioned remembering God's sovereignty and his mercy. But I think also, too, we can remember the, the joy that comes from, from knowing God and, and the fact that uh, uh, we, we get to spend eternity with him. You know, that same verse you just said, my soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you. You know, uh, the psalmist here is, is uh, because he is sad, he's intentionally remembering God. And I think it's a good... Uh, thing for us to think about too that when we're sad we can intentionally reflect on the joy that comes from the truth of salvation the truth that we get to spend eternity in heaven Mm -hmm. you know yeah certainly a lot of joy there just like you know even if coronavirus like we don't want this to happen but we go for like the rest of our lives and we would have to live in a state like this we still get eternity in heaven with god and that's enough uh So let's finish off Psalm 42, uh, verses 9 through 11. Uh, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Uh, so verses 9 and 10 kind of act as like uh, a further lament. Uh, and as we see in verse 10, there's people that are like verbally assaulting the psalmist, saying like, where is your God in the midst of this? Uh, I think that there have been people who have done this in coronavirus for us, of just like, if God is really real, then why is this going on? Like, where is your God? Um, and that's going to happen. Uh, but ultimately, like, where is your hope. Uh, I kind of like flip the question back on them. Well, I have God to hope in. Who who do you hope in? Like, if this is it, this is it for you, but you know, I have God. What do you have? And so, like, that's a tremendous amount of hope for me. 
And did you notice how verse 11 mirrors verse 5? So when we're lamenting, we always run back to God. When we're sad, we run back to God, as Brian was saying. So continue to remember that salvation is through the Lord. Uh, Whether it be salvation and uh, liberation from coronavirus or like salvation like as in heaven. Uh, Salvation comes through the Lord. Uh, He has the power to deliver us from suffering. Uh, He might not, but he has the power to. So we must put our hope and wait on the Lord. Uh, Next up, uh, we're going to head into Psalm 43 here. So verse 1. Uh, vindicate me, my God, and plead my cause against an unfaithful nation. Rescue me from those who are deceitful and wicked. Uh, so there the psalmist is like saying, hey, God, like these people are verbally assaulting me, as we saw in like verses 9 and 10. Uh, like rescue me, help me out here. Uh, verse 2, you are God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by the enemy? Uh, so the psalmist is like wondering him himself too. Like, where is God in this? Uh, I, that's a fair question in suffering. Uh, there are times where maybe God seems absent in our lives. Uh, it's it happens. Uh, it's a real part of the Christian walk. There's times where you know you you feel like you're walking really close with God, uh, and you know everything's running smoothly. And then there's other times where it's like you don't see God moving at all, uh, and those are really painful times. Um, so I just want to like remind you guys, like if you guys are like lamenting and you guys are sad, like that's okay. Like it's a totally normal thing to do. You will move past it eventually, but it's a totally normal and biblical thing to do. There's a whole book in the Bible called Lamentations. If you, it's a pretty fitting book to read right now. So if you haven't read it, you should go read it. Um, so verses three and four, send me your light. In your faithful care, let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then I will go to the altar of God. To God, my joy and my delight, I will praise you with the lyre. O oh God, my God. So the psalmist is pleading for the Lord to show up. Uh, he is kind of showing that he is dependent on God to show up here. Um, and so what I want us to learn here, like, is we need to learn how to, like, be dependent on God. Uh, I remember that was a big thing when I started here at Bauer Christian Reformed Church. Uh, is I would try to do things under my own power. And uh, as Brian could probably attest, things went better when I relied, like, learned to rely on God. Um, and so, like, it's kind of like a hard thing to explain, but it's kind of just like inviting God into, like, your work. Uh, so, like, even with your schoolwork, uh, you can, like, take a moment before you start, be like, Hey, God, I want you to work in me. I don't want to do this schoolwork alone. I want you to do it with me. Uh, and really participating in the work of God. Uh, that doesn't mean that God's just going to give you all the right answers to the math problems and whatnot, but he's going to help you use the best of your abilities. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, like, and then further, like, if, you, I mean, some of you guys were in Detroit uh, with the street evangelism. Uh, what did we do before we, like, went out and started evangelizing? We prayed. Uh, that's because we invite God and we need God uh, to work through us in order for his message to be uh, furthened. Mm-hmm. Furthened? It's furthened or? Spread. Spread. That's a good word. Spread. Uh, yeah. Okay. So then last verse, verse 5. Uh, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. That sounds familiar. Yeah, it does sound familiar. Uh, We've read it two times before, actually, (laughs) Uh, in verses 11 of 42 and verse 5 of 42. Uh, So put your hope in God. I will yet praise him. So like Brian was saying, in the midst of suffering, we yet praise God because our hope is in the Lord. Uh, And I I love how this ends, actually. Uh, He goes, my Savior, uh, which is acknowledging, like, God saves us, uh, and my God. Like, this is personal. This is like really, there's a sense of like, you are my God and we are in relationship with each other. Uh, And so that's kind of like what I want to encourage us all to do is learn to spend time with God during this time of suffering. We all have extra time right now. 
Um, so we can do like those spiritual disciplines that we did like at first, like Lectio Divina, uh, Silence and Solitude. And then there's so many more. Um, you know, for the middle schoolers, you did the labyrinth uh, at the lock-in. Well, create your own little mini labyrinth. Uh, just surround yourself with scripture during this time. Uh, but like make sure we, when we develop these habits, like in this time, make sure that they carry back when times go back to normal. Whenever that is. Yeah, whenever that is. Be it like two weeks from now, three months from now, who knows how long this is going to be. But like if we don't like take these habits of like relying on God, uh, being in the, like spending time with God, and we don't translate them to normal life, we've really learned nothing from this time. Uh, So yeah, that's what I would encourage you all to do. Uh, So yeah, that's really all I have. Ryan, you got anything to add to that? No, I think that's, that's good. You know, during times like these, uh, you know, I think sometimes God uh, uses times like this. You know, again, in Romans, it says God works for, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. And so even things like coronavirus, uh, you know, God, God's using this time to give us an opportunity to draw close to him. Uh, you know, a lot of times we think about even simple things like doing a daily devotions, you know, spending time daily in prayer, these spiritual disciplines. Uh, a lot of times the big objection or the big struggle with those is, well, I don't have time for that. I don't know when I can do that. Well, we got time now, folks. Not only do we have time, but like we're confined to our homes. I mean, like seriously, we we can take 15 minutes away from, you know, whatever it is we're doing to, to, to pray or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, uh, you know, like Caleb said, like this is a great time to evaluate where does your joy lie? Where do you get your strength? Uh, how how can you connect with God? Um and then use this time to, to develop those habits and then uh, carry those habits over into everyday life, I think. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. So. Well, that's, uh, that's all we got for you this week. Um, uh, you know, thanks, Caleb, for, for bringing some word. Um, again, if you got questions for the question box or just, you know, whatever, feel free to, to contact one of us. We'll put a link down below for a uh, question box. God sightings, if you got some of those, send those in. We'd love to share those. Uh, and, uh, yeah, our uh, game, we'll do uh, Pharisees again uh, this upcoming Sunday night, which is April 19. Uh, we'll start at 8 o'clock, and we'll go till 9.30 or 10 o'clock or so. Uh, your parents will have the information in the parent update, uh, so you can ask them for the information for Pharisees. We'll try to send a link out via text as well. It'll come from the Breeze, which is that weird, uh, like, just five-digit number. Um, so we'll, we'll try and send out a link as well. But if you want to join us for some Pharisees via Zoom, uh, we'll be doing that this Sunday night at 8 o'clock. And, yeah, that's about it. So We'll actually get to see you then. We will actually get to see you then, some of you. Yes, that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> He's been waiting for that. Yeah. Anyways, so that, that's all we got for you for now. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, we'll see you. No, 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 no. No, you'll, you'll, you'll see, see us, us next week. See, you're rubbing off on me. This is not good. Yeah. All right, take care, y'all. We'll see you. We'll see you later.